Well, a very happy Friday to you flying friends. Welcome to another edition of Flyday Facts. Now, before we get started, how's your week been? I hope you've had a good week. Has the weather been nice? It's been pretty stormy here in Melbourne overnight. We've had quite a bit of rain. Talking of the weather, that's what the subject... No, that's a terrible segue. I'm... Okay, I've done it now, so I'll just keep going. Talking of weather, that's what the subject of today's Flyday Facts is all about, because we're talking about how to use the new graphical area forecasts or the GAFs, which the Bureau of Meteorology only released last week here in Australia. Now, it's no secret that I've had a problem with the area forecast for quite a long time. It was really annoying to try and plot it all on a map. Flicky, where is... I'll tell you what I'd like, just to have the system say that this time this is where the weather's forecast to be. I don't know why there has to be this huge decoding process for pilots to then plot it all out on a chart. But now with the new graphical area forecast, you don't need to do that anymore. It's all presented in a really easy to understand format for you. So let's dive straight in. Let's put 600 feet on the altimeter and let's get into GAFs. Now, Australia used to be 28 regions for area forecasts, which was a bit of a pain if you're going on a long trip because you ended up going through several different areas. That's been reduced now to just 10 distinct areas. And especially for local flights, it makes it way easier to look at your area forecast and know exactly what's going on. Now, the new GAFs are released every six hours covering a 12 hour period. So you get a six hour, then a six hour, then a six hour, then a... So how do they look? The GAFs basically broken down into five main areas. You've got your header at the top, which gives you your time that it was published and the validity of the forecast. Now the map is your graphical component, that's the visual version of the areas you're looking at. You'll see fronts on there, your critical locations, and those green squiggly lines, those are the sub-areas which are referenced over here in the main table. Now this main table shows visibility, cloud, icing, other weather information, and the freezing level for each of those sub-areas. There's a legend as well which helps with decoding and shows what the critical locations are for some areas, and the remarks box has information on those critical locations and any other info that you might need. Now, along with the GAFs, there's also a brand new grid point wind and temperature view chart, which is also on the BOM website. Now, this looks like a fully hectic version of information when you first look at it, but actually when you break it down, it's quite straightforward. Each one of those boxes, let's just take the one over Melbourne here, each one shows wind direction, speed and temperature all at various levels. And finally, now you can also download the GAF as a PDF, which is brilliant because you can download it, print it out, stick it in your flight log, and then take it with you when you're going off on your navigation flights. I hope you found that useful. I love the new system. So if anyone from the Bureau of Meteorology is watching, thank you. It's a massive improvement. Go and check it out. I'll link to the BOM website as well. They've got a really good page with more information on the GAF, so I'll link to that down below. If you have anything else that you'd like me to cover in these Flyday Facts videos, then do let me know. Give us a like if you enjoyed that video. If you haven't subscribed and you love aviation and travel content, make sure you click that subscribe button. Otherwise, thank you as always for watching. Have a great weekend and I'll catch you soon.